Hey, Manufacturing World, welcome to another episode of Shop Matters, sponsored by Akuma America. I'm your host, Wade Anderson. Joining me here in the studio today, I've got Al Dopp from Heinbuch Work Holding. Welcome, Al. Thank you, Wade. It's good to see you. All right. So, Al, why don't you introduce yourself, talk us uh, through a little bit of your, your career and, and what you do for Heinbuch. Okay. I'm the national sales manager for Heinbuch. I've um, been in the machine tool industry for a long time. In fact, it been in the metal cutting industry. My first job in 1979 was selling plasma cutting equipment as a regional manager for the Carolinas and then eventually Virginia. I've worked for machine tool dealers. I've worked for um, uh, machine manufacturers, worked for um, uh, accessory companies. Mm-hmm. Um, been in work holding now for about the last 15 years, um, and now I'm a national sales. I've been a national sales manager before for another accessory type company, so it's um, it's something that um, you know the work holding part I'm passionate about now because I've I've been doing it a long time. I've had some uh, good. I had a really good mentor that uh, kind of brought me along. Um, so it's, um, it's exciting now, and it's exciting to lead another group of, of sales guys, and I have a, a very good quality product as well and a good company to work for. Yeah, so work holding is a, a fun part of machining. Um, back when I was at AE, um, you know, running the machines, doing a customer process was one thing. Um, back then, a lot of what I did, I'd have to make my own fixtures, my own work holding, uh, six-point nest, that kind of thing. Right. Um, and, and for me, that was always the funnest part of any process because your brain is really engaged on how do I hang on to this part and, and work around and get the geometries, get the R&R that I need, uh, the repeatability that I need on the part and things of that nature. So it's so intricate and, and uh, just a fun part of the machining process. So tell us a little bit about the products that Heinbuch uh, what what is your sweet spot in the marketplace? That, that's a good question. So Heinbuch um, lives in the um, smaller diameter round part mm-hmm. area. So um, although we do specials and we do a lot of large parts as specials, um, off the shelf things were are in the 160 millimeter range on down all the way down to five, sometimes even as small as three millimeters. Mm-hmm. So we do. Um, we do OD clamping, we do ID clamping, we do um, two jaw, three jaw, um, but our main thing is quick change. Yeah. So we're quick change at everything, but at the same time, we're selling tight concentricity, we're, we're selling rigidity, we're, and we're selling flexibility. Mm-hmm. For instance, um, you know, with with a, um, a segmented collet or clamping head, the way we call it. Um, you know, you have you have parallel clamping on a round part, but you're clamping 360 degrees of that part, minus the vulcanization on it. Mm-hmm. So unlike a jaw chuck, which is self-centering, um, you know, we we have great radial clamping, and and then also um, with a pullback chuck, whether it be ID clamping or OD clamping, you have axial drawdown or axial pullback and radial clamping. So you have a, a snug, snug grip on a, on a round part, right. whether it be ID or OD. Also, um, unlike a three-jaw chuck, um, you don't have to worry about centrifugal force. The, the effect of centrifugal force is much less um, because the actual body of, of a chuck is surrounding the clamping head, whereas on a jaw chuck, the, the jaws are exposed and they have a tendency to, to work their way out and lose clamping force at higher RPMs. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that you guys really specialize on, on the, the round stuff. Um, I'll give a quick story, a story I always like to share about working with Heinbuk um, and our partners in Think Facility. Uh, we did an open house several years ago. We called it the Winter Showcase. And uh, what I try to do is team up different partner companies together to come up with something, a, a problem that they see in the industry, things that they see customers struggling with or new technologies that they want to introduce and work together as a group of five to seven companies to develop whatever this process looks like. Mm-hmm. I don't tell them what machine, you know, I put the group together, let them come up with it. And then they come back to me and say, this is the part or this is the solution we want to show. And here's the machine that we would like to do it on. 
and having Heinbuch in the mix, I was just automatically expecting it was going to be a lathe or one of our multifunction machines. We call it a, a Maltus machine. And instead, uh, when when the team leader came back to me and said, hey, we would like to get one of your small five-axis machines, uh, or sorry, it was actually an M560 with a Nick and uh, fourth and fifth rotary table on it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of floored me because I, I just – automatically assume you guys go on lathes and instead you guys came back and said yeah we gotta we're gonna use one of our collet systems we're gonna hold a part in a different manner and the part actually had a bore on it that you were able to grip with an id collet but there was no turning on the part whatsoever as a five axis milled part um but it was just one of those things you know you kind of paint yourself into a into a corner sometimes or, or get a preconceived notion I had a preconceived notion you guys would be on a lathe and said you came back said yeah put us on a mill we want to hold this this five axis part. That's interesting because we do stationary work holding with everything that we have as far as um, you know we have clamping heads for OD clamping and and uh, ID mantle sleeves for uh, ID clamping for stationary work holding. Mm-hmm. We also have uh, and we have uh, manual clamping for stationary work holding. Um, but it's interesting. We do just as much stationary. Well, we don't do just as much. We we can hold um, round parts mm-hmm. in stationary work holding just as well. And all the adaptations that we have for quick change, we can change a stationary um, chuck from OD clamping to ID clamping to two jaw, three jaw. We have magnetic um chuck that we could put on the only thing we can't do on um stationary clamping is hold between centers and put a face driver on it for, yeah. for obvious reasons right right <laughs> um yeah so let's talk about quick change um and that's really the the strength area uh when i got to know Heinbuch as a company um was the the quick change stuff that's what we showed at imts a couple of times a lot of the systems we've had in charlotte on the machines and things that we've done in the field with customers they're all, you know, around a, a quick change solution. Mm-hmm. And when I look at how customers produce parts, I go back to when I was an AE doing time studies back in the 90s. You know, we would win and lose projects based on cycle times of parts. But most of the time, those were on high volume, high production type stuff. In today's world, we're not seeing too many people. You know, you, you're bigger. You've got certain like OEMs or top tier suppliers that are landing these large production runs. But over 80% of our business at Akuma, pardon me, is the job shop area. Well, those guys aren't running the the large volumes. They're doing smaller quantity volumes and a lot of changeovers, which requires a lot of setups. And so now all of a sudden your cycle time, when you put math to it, you can you can have a longer cycle time on a machine that has a much faster rate of doing changeovers. Correct. And you can be much more productive and win a lot more money at the end of the year than what you do off of if you're just trying to focus everything on what your cut time is, what your cycle time is. Um, So that quick change is such a vital, important aspect of being able to go from part A to part B or part A to part C quickly. The faster I can do that, the faster I can get my spindle back cutting parts and making shipments where I make money at that point. Yeah, we, we talk about that all the time because setup time can can take hours in mm-hmm. some instances. So with a, um, a clamping head, we have the quick change. So for OD clamping, we could change a, a, a clamping head in 15 seconds to go from one diameter to another. Mm-hmm. But we can also do OP10, let's say, on a, a OD clamping, and then op 20 might be ID clamping. And in a matter of a minute, a minute and a half, we can use the same chuck and put a, um, an ID mandrel onto it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's a, um, you know, short runs, if they need to put something on that uh, they need a three-jaw chuck, on that same chuck, we have a, a three-jaw chuck adaptation that can go on. We can do uh, face driving um, and hold a part between centers in just a matter of minutes. Hmm. And then we have another thing called our um, Centrotex where we can change an entire chuck, anyone's chuck, in less than five minutes, the whole chuck. And, and that's usually something that takes hours because 
you have to unbolt a chuck, and mm-hmm. chucks are heavy, and it's not even safe getting in there and grabbing a chuck. Um, but with our Centra Tech system, we have the uh, part, the we'll call it the uh, the flange that goes onto the machine, onto the spindle nose. Mm-hmm. We mount that during installation. We uh, we indicate it and get that right on. Very little run out. And then it repeats every time. You don't have to worry about that again because then you have the you have the um, the base plate, and then every chuck that you have will have another adapter that goes on it, and it's just a matter of taking the um, uh, turning a half on the on the bolts on a on a chuck, and it's got the bayonet system. You give it a fifteen degree turn, it comes off. And you're ready to put another one on. In, in a minute, and you don't have to indicate, you don't have to tighten all the bolts, um, it's, just, it's just on. And you can be confident that, that the runout is going to be um, within eight microns or less. So that's, that's a huge savings. Yeah. So I'm used to seeing that on mills for zero-point work holding, right? You have mm-hmm. a base plate and a receiver. Your vice or fixture goes onto a receiver um, or a base plate that goes into the receiver. Sure. So you're basically taking that same concept and adapting that to a lathe application. So if you've got a A26 or a A25 or 140 flat nose, you would have an adapter plate that goes on that spindle nose, Correct. and that, that would be the receiver, and then your base plate basically goes on the back of whatever your chuck yeah. and allows for the quick change. You know, that's so interesting because I never compared it to a zero-point clamping system, but it's, but it's close. See, I, I'm more than a pretty <laughs> face, pal. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Actually, zero point clamping system can be a hair faster too, because mm, yeah. <laughs> you just pop it right on and and pop it off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but think about the amount of time you're saving. And just like a zero point clamping system, we can also do this from one machine to another machine. So with with these short runs, if you have a machine that's that's has some open time and it has our base plate on there, mm-hmm. um, you can go ahead and take a chuck from one machine and a job that one machine normally does and take it over to the machine that's idle and put it on there. Mm-hmm. And, and that way you could be making parts on both machines too. And that's ag- an excellent point. And again, it's, it's so fast because the amount of time that you spend undoing bolts Mm-hmm. And then the most important thing is getting it indicated right. again. Your concentricity and, and... And what you're doing there, too. I mean, you, you take the bolts off, you tighten a new chuck on there. You put your indicator on, you loosen the bolts a little bit, you get your orange plastic hammer and, and bang yeah. on it, and you get it a little bit too far off, and you go back the other direction and go back and forth. Depending on the, on the person doing it, could take that alone could take 45 minutes. Mm. Um, taking the chuck off and putting it on. I, I normally say um, to, to take a chuck off and install a whole new chuck could take three or four hours. Hmm. And we can do it in five minutes. Okay. It takes time to do the, put the original base plate, we'll, we'll call yeah, it your the initial receiver. initial setup. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once that's done, it's fast. Okay. And if you're using our chucks on it, our OD or ID clamping chucks, you can still change uh, the diameter of parts very quickly with the, I call it the pistol grip, but the, um, mm-hmm. the, the collet uh, change fixture that yeah. um, you put it on. Uh, and, and even the, um, if you're holding from the ID, you can still change those in, in a minute. So mm-hmm. we're big on quick change, but at the same time, we're big on repeatability with, with quick change and, and not having to, to re-indicate or anything. So... Again, we're holding concentricity. We're um, with uh, with radial clamping and axial drawdown. Uh, I mean, we're we're holding a rigid part, which prevents chatter, which makes gives you a better surface finish, which makes tool life last longer. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that that we're about um, that completes a, a system too on a machine. Yeah. Can that tie into automation? Are you seeing any of that technology uh, find its way into automated cells? Absolutely. So um, 
for smaller diameters, we have this Centrotech system that we use for um, for changing entire chucks. Okay. Um, and we have it where you can um, change out chucks using a robot. So I'll back up a little bit. We can change a clamping head or segmented collet from one diameter to another with a robot. We can also change the uh, end stop or work stop with mm. a robot too. So I didn't mention that yet, but that's important because that's custom and we're making custom st uh, end stops and we're making, um, we can do custom clamping heads too. But when you're using automation, um, you usually need air sensing for part confirmation. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the end stop. Okay. So we'll need a different one for each part we're going to do too. We can change those with a robot. Then we can change the clamping head with a robot. Then we can also change the adaptation to go from OD clamping to ID clamping with a robot. Then the next step is we can change out the whole chuck with a robot too. Okay. It's the smaller diameter ones though. We can't do the, well, the robots do um, A25 and A26 spindle nose mm -hmm. range. Um, anything bigger, we haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah, um, okay. But, um, but it's interesting that with automation the way it is right now and short runs, you could have lights out unattended operation with a machine and and do a couple different operations on one machine with different types of clamping or different diameters, different parts, all completely unattended. Right. So we did a cell um, several years ago, and, and we actually have one in Japan at one of our dream site facilities. You're familiar with the FMS system on, on mills. Yes. Typically you have horizontals tied into mm -hmm. a, a Fastums or, or another uh, brand FMS system. Um, which is basically a big shelving unit for anybody that doesn't know what an FMS system is. It's basically a big shelving rack system. And then you have a elevator that will feed the pallet in and out of the horizontals or, or five axis machines. Um, but we've seen that on lathes now. And instead of the parts being in the racks, it's all the chucks, all the, mm -hmm. all the collets and all the, the central pieces yep. um, or the, the base plate type system. So the robot Instead of feeding parts in and out, they're going up, grabbing the work holding, and changing the work holding out, mm -hmm. and basically making a—I um, don't know if they're going to use that same terminology or not—but basically making an FMS system for a lathe. Only the FMS is full of different types of top tooling, different types of work holding. Right, you know? and that's basically what we're doing when we change our work holding. But we've also taken it even another step too, because now we have um, what we call our top plus. IQ chuck, which is a, a smart chuck with embedded sensors in it as well. Mm -hmm. So now you have you have unattended lights out operation. You're changing these chucks with a robot, but let's now get some data from these chucks and be able to make some adjustments on the fly without an operator there. So we can um, with embedded sensors we can measure clamping pressure, we can measure machine RPMs, so we can look at if there's any loss of clamping pressure during the night, um, we know about it, and we can send that information to a machine controller where adjustments can be made on the fly, or the information we send to the controller, at least it can be analyzed, and they can say, oh, maybe the tool is wearing out or something like that, because the things that we can measure, we can, we can measure clamping pressure, we can measure spindle speed and RPMs. We could measure, if it's, say, an OP20, we can measure the size of the part, the diameter of the part mm. by clamping on it. Um, so if you see it's going the wrong direction, an adjustment can be made. Or you could say, hey, this maybe the, the tool is, is wearing out or something like that. We can measure vibration. So if there's chatter from the tool. We can also measure, um, instead of having air sensing for part confirmation while the parts are being changed, we could have um, sensors there too. Hmm. So that eliminates all that plumbing, that eliminates a rotary union for air. And this is all done, um, this, this data is transmitted to the controller um, non-contact. Right. So, okay. so it's, because obviously the part's turning. Um, so that's something that, um, 
that really works well in a partnership program like like we're, we're part of because we can give you the data but what you do with the data is is a whole nother thing and and of, of course even from the tooling you have um you, you know you could put a chip on a tool holder mm-hmm. you have smart tooling it's all part of industry 4.0 and the direction we're all going right so we're doing our share on that but Standardization might be important. Being partnering with with our other companies, like we do with you, is is also important too. Because um, you have the controller, we just have the data that that we're given to you, and it has to be analyzed. Um, sometimes it could just be used for history, mm-hmm. you know. So you could follow this part, and you know what happens eventually. So you can predict changes at at different times too so it's so, exciting yeah I, I wish i'd have thought through this more when we chatted you know about you coming to to be part of this podcast um earlier today we had datanomics and karen engineering in here and a big part of their talking points was was data and collecting it and then not just collecting it but what do you do with it how do you right. use that to make your manufacturing process better I should have had you sitting beside me and had all three of us talking because that is a direct tie-in to exactly what uh, what datanomics and and companies like yourself, Karen Engineering, everybody, we can extrapolate a lot of data off the process, but then what do you do with it? Well, that's where a company like datanomics and, right. and other people can come in and and feed that to help you make informed decisions about your manufacturing process. Absolutely, and it's. And, and that part of the industry is changing so fast. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be where, um, you know, I'll back up. Heimbook had this smart chuck made 10 years ago, mm-hmm. but there was, no one could use it. The market wasn't ready. Right. So we put it on the shelf. And then now that the market is ready, you know, we took it off the shelf. We blew the dust off it, basically. And, yeah. and, and now we have a product. But um, the original one, it... Um, the data was transmitted via a uh, profi bus, mm-hmm. slow and old fashioned, and that's not the, not the way to go. Now that we have this uh, contactless transmission of data, and and controls and other companies are getting more involved in this. This is the direction of Industry 4.0 that that's the hot one of the hottest things. I mean, my thing right now is. We got to keep up with the times. We have to automate um, mm-hmm. because things are changing, and and it used to be that work holding was the slowest part to change. You know, machines got so much faster. Machines that direct drive the the inertia from stopping and starting and everything required good quality work holding. Tooling changed and it, and was cutting so much faster. Work holding hadn't changed a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And and one thing about Heimbuch is i mean our our r and d department is is busy all the time they're looking at new things we have new things on the drawing board all the time and that's what i love about our company hmm. um it's it, it's looking to the future as well yeah uh, we might have gotten a slow start here in the us compared to some of the others um getting here and getting our name out but now we're we're getting our name out we're we're known as fast Quick change, we're known as uh, very rigid clamping um, and holding tight tolerances and repeatability and accuracy. So um, we're, we're there, and, and it's exciting to know that over in Germany, we have an R&D department that's, that's working hard to keep up with the times and constantly make changes and, and, and look for new ways of, of holding parts better. Yeah, excellent. Um, you had mentioned earlier about a carbon fiber chuck. We do have you know, a carbon fiber chuck. Yes, that's see to me stuff like that. That's interesting technology, and I don't know that everybody's ready to go that route yet. But just to think again, where where are we going? What's what's going to be on the market five, ten years down the road? Uh, I agree. Now our our carbon fiber chuck. The the reason you have that is lightweight. Yeah. So it's. You spin uh, it up and down really fast. I, can't you? I love holding it. We we have one in uh, Germantown, Wisconsin. Here, I love handing someone a heavy chuck and then handing someone this yeah. carbon fiber chuck, and it's light as a feather. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Well, and that goes into a payload um, capacity as well for the for a robot. You know, if you're trying to do a collaborative robot, you know, solution where you're trying to implement something yourself, man, what a what a great way to to look at can we get weight out of the process and Ch- changes the size of the robot that, yeah. that you have to use. Um, the, um, the the robot can go a little bit quicker, maybe because the starting and stopping in the, the inertia of a heavy truck is is a lot harder. With something real light, it's it's even easier. Mm-hmm. Um, what what we have to do is get everyone confident enough. And you look at a lightweight truck like that, um, and it doesn't have the the gripping force of a, a big sure, strong yeah. steel truck. But there's a place for it. The lighter materials, plastic material mm-hmm. too. Um, so there's there's a place um, we need to just get that out. But thank you for bringing that up because it's something <laughs> that that's um, it's another one of our newer type uh, innovations that mm-hmm. we have. That uh, now that we you, have. you know, and hopefully I didn't speak out of turn. Is that a product that's on the market? I mean, if somebody mm-hmm. had the right process and the it, right part, is that? Yes, we have a okay. part number. We have one in, uh, in Germantown. Germantown, Wisconsin. I believe it's probably a six-inch chuck, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, we, we have one. It's got a part number. It's something that, that we manufacture. Um, it hasn't taken off that much yet. But, yeah, okay. But, but it will. All right, excellent. Will you guys be at IMTS this year? Definitely. We're looking forward to that, too. Yeah. And, in fact, the news that we're hearing now – um, you know, the mask mandate is being lifted in, in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um, just from your marketing department in the last couple of days, from meetings that they had, um, it sounds like they're on track with attendees of, of 2014, 2016 IMTSs, yeah. which were fine because mm-hmm. 2018 was a record year. Right. Um, and I think people are, are doing the wait and see type thing, too. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I'm excited. I've I've heard the uh, exhibitors are uh, f- filling the place up too. Yeah. Um. There might even be a few more changes there. If people are doing the wait and see. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm optimistic that it's going to be a good. From Akuma's good, perspective, we're we're all in. Um, we are we're, too. we're going into it just as we would any other you know 2014 2016 type uh, years. So. Um, we've got a, a really good crop of machines going, and uh, I had to submit my personnel list and budget of you know who I'm sending from my team to go up there. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think there's a lot of people um, last year, you know, with the or last I was called years in terms of IMTS. It's funny right. how you do that in this manufacturing world. But right. two years ago, <laughs> um, we didn't do uh, a physical IMTS with right. the pandemic and everything. Um, so you know, I think there's some some people ready to get back in front of people again and machines and seeing technologies. And um, I think it's going to be a big, big show for us. Right. And I, I agree. Um, so it's been four years. Yeah. So people like you and I who can count years that we've been in the industry by how many IMTSs <laughs> we've, we've worked. Um, yeah, we're excited to get back in. Um, there's been a lot of changes in the last four years as well, too. Yeah. Um, people, uh, there's a lot of new people in the industry too. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that will be, uh, interesting for them. I think people are, um, excited and users are doing things. My stomach's growling. It's going to come across (laughs) on film, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but you know, even, uh, manufacturers are, are making different types of parts. You know, you look at the different industries in four years, um, the automotive industry has has really changed over to electric vehicles. Yeah, what too. a great point. Um, and even um, aerospace materials are changing. But, um, yeah, the uh, automotive industry going from gasoline heavy has has changed a lot in the last four years. Yeah, the, the way those parts are manufactured. And, I mean, it's got us looking at how do we – what machine tool designs have to change – to address changing markets. So mm-hmm. um, that's, as we're looking at how the machine tools change, that's got to affect you guys on how does the work holding side of it change? Well, you know, another thing that Heimbook specializes in, we're really good at, at holding gears. Hmm. I mean, we can, um, we can put a, um, a clamping head, we could cut a, a profile of the gear in a, in a clamping head and actually locate 
and and grip on the uh, pitch diameter of a gear. Yeah. So when a gear and and we ha- and we can hold gears on an ID and and have plenty of room for a hobbing tool to get in there and and cut the gear teeth. So after a gear goes to heat treat, it comes back, and one of the final stages is um, touch up that ID bore and make it in direct relationship with the pitch line. Mm-hmm. So if we can clamp on the pitch line and locate in the same place and do that ID bore, it's in direct relationship with it. reason I bring that up is because gears is one of the places with electric cars is going to change. So there's less gears in an electric car than, than there is in a transmission. But there's still a good amount of gears, and some of them are at, at each wheel. Right. And, uh, and there's still steering. There's still things mm-hmm. like that. So there's, um, there's still a good amount of gears in electric vehicles that, that we're still excited about the automotive industry for that point of view, too. Uh, Certainly. All so. right. Well, Al, thank you so much. It's been a great chat with you. I appreciate you taking time to come in and join us. Thank you, Wade. I enjoyed it. It went fast. It, it, it does, I tell you. So if, uh, if customers are listening, they want to learn more about Heimbook, how do they reach out to you? Heimbook.com. All right. Um, easy enough. Spell that for them. H-A-I-N-B-U-C-H. Perfect. All right. And thank you for joining us. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future podcasts, please reach out to us. Be sure to check out all of Akuma's social media channels for other video content as well as machine information. Till next time, we'll see you then.